the Ducit D2 terror attack. The most recent hit on Kenyan soil that left at least 21 people dead. Run down! Run while you're low! Unfolded the 14 Riverside Drive complex in Nairobi's Westlands, an upscale complex hosting Ducit Hotel and other businesses. It was around 2.30 p.m. on January 15, 2019, when an explosion was heard within the complex. Michael Mudavadi was there. As soon as I look out, I just see now the five guys, the five terrorists with the, you know, full body armor, the, you know, um, ammunition, grenades, you know, strapped around them, and they're just shooting anyone and everyone in sight. It took him less than a minute to make a decision that would save his life. And we hide underneath the fire escape uh, in because at the time, Ducit was still doing a bit of construction here and there. There was a lot of construction material left uh, by the, the company that was obviously doing the renovations. So we hid underneath <laughs> all of that material, like Mabati, uh, pieces of wood. Michael Wynn then texted his father, ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi, about the encounter. As this unfolded, the news was now viral of how Ducit was under attack. And then we heard them now enter our office on the first floor. And now we hear them shooting up our office. Uh, we heard screaming coming from like uh, Cellulant because Cellulant was opposite us and unfortunately they, they lost everyone, all their employees, all eight. Security agents responded swiftly. Among those who arrived to neutralize the terrorists were the anti-terror police unit, Rekes Code and General Service Unit who were in to combat the militants. Michael was among the first people to be rescued during the two-day operation. To date, the memories of the attack are still fresh on his mind. Because obviously we went back into Ducit, so for them it was it was uh, bringing back you know b very bad memories. So a lot of them even quit. Um, we just started losing many di you know different employees day by day. One day a resignation letter comes, another one, another one, and then uh, even if myself eventually I was just like ah, even me let me just resign because uh, this is a place that it doesn't bring good memories. On the other hand, the National Police Service spokesperson Bruno Chiosio, however, regrets the unfortunate incident. Beyond that, we build very, very robust, very robust and working uh, internal collaborations. And that's why you always hear now this, we never talk about police or NPAs or law enforcement. You'll always hear us nowadays talking about multi agent security. It's not just in vain or just for the sake of semantics. No, it's real, but uh, now it's our architect in terms of security. We've known that if we work alone, we are weaker. We work together, collaboratively and cooperatively, we are stronger. It is noted that community policing plays a vital role in strengthening state surveillance. When we know each other in that environment, we're conscious about each other and we care about each other, we're able to know what's happening. If a new person comes to the community, let's try to know those kind of issues. Thirdly, it's always again about intelligence. That, uh, People might even know what's happening, but they don't share. This, let them know that security is not a policeman's security, it's your security. He also says the success on countering such events draws back on introduction of multi-agency approach in responding to such violent acts. Within these two years, maybe it's been radicalized and it's going into some other pathway, just because we never kept in contact with him or with her. You see, that happened from this hit. You've seen those kind of situations. Young people just, just left home going to look for greener pastures. They never came back home. Next time they are seeing on TV, they are part of uh, the, the terrorist people. All said, the country has remained on board, but Kenyans are reminded to be the first actors when it comes to securing a nation. Franklin Wala, K24 TV.